everyone. Uh, welcome to this special edition of Ghosts of Bacon. I'm the host, uh, Jake Roberts. Great to see so many people already with us this evening. Uh, this this is going to be uh, one to remember, I think. Um, I have a special guest here, a good friend of mine, uh, John Edwards, <clears throat> a uh, fellow researcher um, extraordinaire. Uh, he's an expert in uh, symbolism and uh, he actually, uh, he, he studied the uses of symbolism in epistemological pedagogy at Loyola. This guy knows what he's talking about, gang. Um, so uh, please welcome uh, my good friend, uh, John Edwards, to the show. And hey, John. Hey, Jake. How you doing tonight? We're doing well. Uh, just had a great time visiting with you here pre-show and uh, can't wait to see everyone's reaction to what you got going on here tonight. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think so. So uh, what, what I'd really like you to do for us, uh, if you could uh, just, you know, for maybe there's a, a few people who uh, don't know you or, okay. or haven't heard of you, uh, give a quick uh, intro. Uh, you know, how did you fall into this line of research? Um, you know, what, what's your latest work about and uh, what would you like to show us tonight? Oh, great. Um, you know, I'm a teacher by trade. Um, I've been studying symbols for, for 30 years now. Um, as you and I had, were discussing uh, pre, um, my, my symbolism uh, comes from the work of Joseph Campbell's. Instead of comparative mythology, it's comparative symbolism. So I kind of fell into from there and then has been studying it ever since. So it, it's, it's a passion of mine. So I really enjoy doing it. And um, it's something I just kind of fell into. So something um, else you and I... Uh... Uh, share in terms of <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely happy coincidence yeah and and so i've been studying them um i'm looking at them in context my, my um my area of expertise templar symbolism templar history um pedagogy um uses of um, icons and symbols and pedagogy during the elizabethan period um secret societies of course <laughs> Of course. And, and and just looking at the uh, the line of thought. And I'm also one of the co-hosts on the Curse of Oak Island Beyond uh, live stream. So you can also catch me there. And um, it's something I really enjoy doing. So, you know, I've been involved with a lot of the theorists. I've talked to a lot of the theorists. I hear a lot, you know. And what you and I were discussing before, it's really about a tapestry. And what you and I, I think, are going to go back and forth tonight is about the, the big tapestry. And, you know, my area of, is symbolism and your area is, is the, the, the ciphers. But there, right. there are overlaps. And what's really right. unique about when you see it in cipher and I see it symbolically and it right. says the same thing, then you know you have something special. Absolutely. And, and you know, <clears throat> it, it, the way we were uh, just for the audience, uh, we, a lot of people are piling in here. All Everyone's good, saying, good, hi, good. we got Jeff, we got Linda, uh, Michelle. Hey, hey Linda. good to see you. Uh, Dan Spino, he, it's Christmas time. Hey, he man. wants to know if we're, we're going to be giving gifts since it's like, this is like Christmas. <laughs> yes. Um, insight this, this, insight this, is the gift. <laughs> this show is the gift that's going to keep on. <laughs> exactly. <getting. laughs> it's so, awesome. Yeah, it's great. So, I mean, we, you know, have some really great viewers here. A lot of, a lot of the regulars, I see some new names. So, uh, great to see everyone uh, this evening. So thanks for joining us. Um, so yeah, you know, I wanted to uh, give you a shout out to, uh, you know, your co-host with Jeff. Um, uh, frequently, you guys also uh, aren't, aren't you do, also doing a side project there? Um, uh, did 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 you end up start do it starting your new show, Beyond? Yes, yeah, Beyond Our World, and we do a side project, and that's on the occasion. But uh, we do do that, and we we explore things that are beyond our world. You know, like yeah. maybe paranormal, maybe you know aliens, thing, things of that sort. Um, awesome. It's something we enjoy do. We just look at like alternative theories. I'm a bit of a conspiracist, so it's just something that I enjoy looking at. Not that I lend any credence to it, but again, a line of thought. You know, I'm I'm all about the conspiracy. <laughs> It, it, it's fun. It's fun. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good stuff. So I wanted to make sure that we uh, uh, gave that also a little shout out. So, uh, so that everyone will be popping in and joining you guys for that show as well. So <clears throat> what do you have for us tonight, even though I already know the answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, your expertise is, is Cyprus, obviously, and my expertise is symbolism and secret societies, esoterica, things of that sort. Um, esoterica meaning, you know, Beneath, what's hidden what's hidden you know beneath the surface and so a, a lot of what i've looked at symbolically i've said okay you know there it is there's saying something what is it saying symbolically um i started to take what you're doing and matching it with my own work and mm -hmm. so i said okay let's see if 
what Jake's doing with the ciphers can be carried over into what I'm doing with the symbols. And guess what? There was an overlap. And I was there like, oh, <laughs> okay, there's an overlap here. So um, I, I start to tackle one of Bacon's works. I've been doing this off and on for approximately five years. Mostly, you know, every every week or so I, I dive into it. And now it's become a little, a little more frequent. When I'm looking at King James Version 1611 Bible, which Francis Bacon was responsible for editing. Okay. Now, yeah. if my hypothesis is right and everything holds true and the codes are the same, the way he's coding the things that you're seeing should be commiserate with the same way he's coding the King James Version. It would certainly of the Bible. seem that way now, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would. So that was my running hypothesis. And so, as a, and, and literally, I have found dozens and do, I mean, I would say hundreds now of, yeah. of coded ciphers within the King James Version of the Bible, the 1611. Yeah. Um, not by the example, the example you have uh, tonight, I just absolutely love. This is I, it's 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 beautiful, and you know I, I I I mean you saw it, and when you saw it, you were kind of stunned. I mean I was like, yeah, but that's yeah, what yeah, it's saying. It's, well, that's just it, and, and the reason is it, it's like I've never looked at that particular psalm, and um, yeah. I mean I, I you know I've, I've looked at the frontispiece and and you know I've decrypted multiple messages there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I've looked at different passages, but and and it's it's there. It's all there. One hundred percent. It's all there. You know, I'm, but <clears throat> the, what you did with this one. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, gang, we, we, he, he went through this with a pre-show and uh, we just kind of did a little run through and you guys are in for such a treat this evening. We, you talked about the idea of the tapestry and, and this, yeah. you and I were talking about this during mm -hmm. the pre-show. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. You know, when we, the way you and I work, I mean, we, we're, we get close to something and we're looking at the thread and we start pulling at the thread, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. and, and, and as we start to do that, all of a sudden, we start to see how it overlaps all of these other threads that are related uh coming from a different angle and then we take a step back and you can see the big picture of the tap tapestry and i yes. i think that that that's what you and i are doing uh together as we kind of start putting our heads together and having more of these conversations sure and uh like, like you said earlier tonight this is probably not this, this is the first of many <laughs> uh, uh, and you know, jason mercer too i know i saw you pop in um you know he's another like-minded individual who who is now really you know starting to see all of this stuff too sure and um so i like i said the, the more of us who do this right mm -hmm. um uh, the bigger that picture is going to get and the clearer it's going to get and as an educator you know it's about being multimodal i'm thinking baking yes. is trying to express himself in, in different modalities and he does and and you know anyone that remember the uh, members of the rose cross do so it, it's just not one way of seeing things and when what I'm decoding my way and you're decoding your way correspond, then yeah. you know it's true and it's repeatable. And, and I talk and about it, repeatable. Re repeatable. And the word that I, I kept using uh, in some of my communications, uh, you know, to uh, fellow Oak Island researchers and, and the Oak Island team is redundancy. Yes. The, the, the message appears in mul multiple times, multiple over. ways to make sure the message gets through. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So, so uh, we get started. All right. So <laughs> let me go ahead and pull. I'll pull this up for you. And it's uh, going to be a good one. I'll run this through Mission Control. I'm just. This is going to be fun. I need to get us to. And you know, as we go through it, there may be th same thing, things I ask of the viewers. There may be things the viewers see. So, as a simple person, and, and, and Jake, as a as a numbers person, if you guys see things that we don't see, please put it into the chat. You know, I, yeah, I'm everyone. Always, we're gonna. Uh, we're both gonna know? be trying to keep our eyes on the chat. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Um, Make sure that. Uh, hey, Court. Court's just arrived. Tom uh, Burns is here. Hey, Tom Burns. Oh, Barbara Tom's Duncan. Here. Paula. Right. Hey, Paula. Mary and, and William. Jan. Hey, Jan. So and there Linda's you go. Here. Hey, Linda. Okay, so this is one of <laughs> this is one of three books I'm working on. Um, this is I called this book, and and I'm. I'm knee deep into it. It's called the Bacon Revolution. And I'm, I'm really looking at what is Bacon trying to communicate besides the relationships that you've decoded so accurately. Mm -hmm. um, esoterically, what esoteric teaching could he be trying to transmit? Um, there is one. And what's really neat about the esoterica that he's trying to transmit is, is it's, 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 it's the very thing that is heresy to to many in, in in the in the you know in the 
church community, so to speak. And then I'm talking about like the Vatican during the time of, of the Elizabethan period. Yeah. So we'll start with this one. This is um, the Great Installation, and this is one of the works that uh, Bacon uh, did. Um, and I wanted to pull this up because this is this is kind of his philosophy of mind. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is published in 1620. And I, I really do a lot with immersion education in my my career, you know, so I want to immerse oh, yeah. myself and try to figure out what Bacon is coming from, where his mindset is and what he finds or values. Um, everything in context. Um, so I saw this. This is one of his more popular quotes, and I figured I would include it in tonight's presentation. Um, yeah. Instrumentation is an action of restoring or renewing. I have a little footnote down there. Rebirth and resurrection um, to renew. So. Man, being the servant of an interpreter of nature, and his refer, you know, referring to nature here, uh, can do and understand so much and so much only as he has observed in fact or in thought by the order of nature. Beyond this, he neither knows any, anything nor can do anything. So he's really looking at man being a reflection of kind of the divinity of nature, the divine presence of nature. Um, and this is kind of his mindset. We're going to see a lot of this kind of, you know, mirror imaging reflection um, where he's really talking here about the divine nature of mind. Um, and, and so what you're talking about is mac, mac, um, the macrocosm versus the microcosm of man. Yeah. Essence yeah. versus existence, uh, yeah. the macro versus the macro. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to leave. Let's go back. Hold on. I don't want to leave that page quite yet because, Sorry. you know, I'm, as a simple person, you know, um, I, what do you see there? Now, you and I discussed it. There is that <laughs> that image right there. What do you see there, Jake? You see what it's, I'm it's, saying? Oh, yeah. It's the duality. Um, yes, you, the duality. You have physical nature down below, and then Correct. you have, the, you know, the ascendant spirit of above. Mm -hmm. um, the H, of course, is a double towel, and all as, as, well, towel. As, the, as well as, as the, the, uh, the pillars. pillars. Yep. Yeah. And that's why I included that image. So we see that. And that's a repeatable image, the pillars. You know, the pillars, Absolutely. ones of strength, ones of, of mercy or sovereignty. And then there's the pillar of mildness, which becomes you. Um, that's seen both in Rosicrucian thought and Masonic thought. So it's a, it's mm -hmm. kind of a carryover. And, and when I really discuss it with people, I really discuss the line of thought. This is a line of thought that's right. handed off, inherited, you know, and, and it moves forward and backwards, you know, as far as this line of thought. You know, you can go back in the line of thought, you can go forward, but it is a line of thought. Yeah. So, next image. And it repeats. Okay. And it repeats again. And this is the frontest piece. And again, you see the master over sciences and the restore man's mastery over nature. And again, Bacon thought it was, you know, that we had lost our way since the fall of Adam. So, there was a, a belief that we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, so to speak. And I'm saying metaphorically. And when you are, what do you see? You see a sense of dualities. You don't see the wholeness of it anymore. When you're out of the Garden of Eden, suddenly it's this and that, black and white, male, female, up, down, you know, yep. things of that sort. And, and you see, uh, Barbara Duncan pointed out, you can see the light and the dark over both pillars as well. Oh, so and, yes. And, yeah, yeah good, good observation, Barbara. Yeah, th awesome. That's a common theme, you know, the, the AA symbol, for example. Of, of bacon and the rosicrucians does now stay thing. with the symbol for a second sure. um you at this point you become that ship you are the one where it's your responsibility to pass through the pillars of hercules the 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 crashing cliffs of the jason and the argonauts and the uh, you know and and you become the middle the middle pillar you become the ship you're making the journey this is your life this is your decision but you know, there's a, a bit of a guidance there between the two pillars, and that's an ongoing theme over and over and over again. Yeah, you, you, the idea of the balance uh, when you are the master of your destiny, you are Correct. the captain of that ship. Yep, uh, you're, you're the one steering it. That's that's what that symbol means. But what you're pointing out is that it's between uh, these 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 opposites, these pillars within which you should operate. Correct, and, and so balance. you. You're not one or the other. You're not, you know, you're not sovereignty. You're not strength. You know, you're you're right in the middle. You're, it's called the pillar of mountains. So you, and, you and follow kind of the middle way. Which is Bacon's motto of, of the Bacon family crest. Yes, the, absolutely. Way of the middle. So, yeah. And you see that, again, that's a repeatable theme for Bacon. So I'm looking at themes, central ideas, as well as, you know, um, the symbols that Bacon's using here. So. 
We can Excellent. continue on with it. And if anyone has a comment, that would be great. So then my line of thought is this, and I'm going to slow down a little bit because I want to kind of dwell on this a little bit. So we, we know that he's talking about the great renewal. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The great renewal of thought, the great renewal of man being aligned with nature once again during the, the Bacon's time. And it is about mind. It's about the nature of mind. It's about being renewed and being reborn in a kind of a mindset. Um, this is very, very similar. Bacon was said to have founded the order of the speculative masons. I've included now whether that's true or not. I have the word alleged. Um, and we have no direct proof for that. Or do we? Because you start to wow. look at the symbols and ciphers and you start to see things. Now, two we, things. We will, this. we will as soon as my next book comes out, John. <laughs> <laughs> two things here. One, the story of Hiram Abiff. Now, in the third degree of masonry, I'm not giving anything that's not public. So I'm not divulging okay, right. any you know, I'm not Mason, but I'm not divulging any source secrets here. Um, uh, Hiram uh, is raised in the light of, of reason, or the light of knowledge, you know. Um, has a completely free mind at this point. And that that degree is three, okay? When three is significant in the, in the Bacon world. Um, and you also mm -hmm. have um, the order. The, the Bacon's speculative uh, masonry order supposedly was founded in 1617. 100 years to the year, Freemasonry was emerging and founded in 1717. My first, when, when I see 100, you know, 100 like that, you know, it's a nice round number. It, it has significance, <laughs> as you and I have discussed. Mm -hmm. I, I start to wonder if there's something to it. So the, you're basically saying everyone who's watching, pay attention to that number. We, we've t discussed the number 100 yeah. on the show multiple times. Yep. I'm looking at the, the, the live chat, John. Um, <clears throat> we have some comments. Uh, my gotcha. friend Stephanie McPeak Peterson, uh, another guest who has been on the show, wonderful writer. Uh, she says, "Yes, uh, uh, the boundary between the between the boundaries, or as Plato would say, two extremes." extremes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Barbara also is pointing out, wasn't the goal of the initiate to pass through the pillars? That's correct. That is you, also correct. You, you pass and, through the pillars, and you're the third pillar. Correct. You know that's that's how it's founded. It. So. God, Creator, and the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And, and Ray, good to see you here. Always good comments hey, uh, representing the idea of God, Creator, and the Holy Spirit. What do you think about that, John? I, I think there's something to that, but we're going to redefine that a little bit. You know, tonight. Yeah. I, I think it would be exciting. I, that's that's um, why I threw that one up there. I thought that that's going to... Oh, uh, Scott always yeah, has great sure. comments. Um, let's see. Freemasonry wasn't founded in 1717. The Grand Lodge of England was founded that year from existing not that, that's logic. correct. Yes. That is that is absolutely correct. Yeah. Great, great job, Scott. Great. All right. So yeah, and he's correct. It was the uh, lodge um founded in London. That was the first uh, Freemasonic Lodge, as far as I know. So he's right. Um mm -hmm. so but it's a hundred years, and that hundred is gonna keep popping up tonight. So this is kind of a magic number for us tonight. So we continue on the first Grand Lodge, and this is what I think what was Scott was referring to. And I always include notes like this, Scott, just to keep my mind <laughs> focused. So the, the first Grand Lodge was founded in uh, on 24th June, 1717, St. John the Baptist Day for existing lodges in London. Um, and this is the first meeting of the lodge. Now, Jake, can you talk to us about the significance of St. John the Baptist Day? Uh, <clears throat> well, for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, Let's look at um, the idea that, well, I'm just going to jump into it. I'm, I'm going to go okay. ahead and drop, go, go for it. Drop, drop the uh, Easter egg I was saving for you. Um, <clears throat> in my research, uh, one of the uh, cipher texts that I, I have since in, uh, decrypted mm -hmm. from Shakespeare's uh, funerary monument plaque states explicitly that, that uh, Bacon states his fama fraternity evolved mm -hmm. into freemasonry Whoa. now so so you know in that sense we, we, you have the fama fraternitanus announcing that it was going to announce itself to the public and and divulge itself in 100 years and they of course did that back in 1617 mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but when it comes to john the baptist uh, first of all, I mean, this is one of the prominent uh, symbols of Freemasonry, in particular with the skull, uh, mm -hmm. since John the Baptist was beheaded. Now, um, 
a very significant point. Uh, John the Baptist was Jesus's cousin because their, their mothers were cousins. Now, um, because of this family bloodline, this is why they were, they were significant individuals um, in, in the Bible. What's really interesting is that John the Baptist's mother, her name was Elizabeth, and of course, Jesus's mother's name was Mary. Well, <clears throat> the veneration, I believe, of John the Baptist and Freemasonry actually stems from Bacon's rule in the prosecution of Robert Devereux, the second Earl of Essex. Well, and here's why. Uh, Robert Devereux was Elizabeth I's secret son. So his mother's name was Elizabeth. And as I've demonstrated multiple times on this show, Francis's mother, she was Mary, and they were cousins. And so in this sense, then John, you're going to like this because this- I love it already. <laughs> your presentation awesome. of what you're going to present Ooh. tonight. Okay. Is that Francis represents Jesus. And he states in the ciphertext that his role in the prosecution of Essex was the greatest folly of his life. He truly, truly regretted it. Wow. He, you know, he, he really, really liked Robert Devereux. Um, <clears throat> and uh, his brother, uh, Anthony, uh, was- they were very, very close. Um, so what we have here is a symbolism or, or a parallelism, if you will, mm -hmm. between John the Baptist and Essex and Francis and Jesus. Wow. Their mothers were cousins, and one was Mary, the other was Elizabeth. That, and that, so wow. Essex was beheaded. How's that? And that's going to dovetail right into what we're talking about tonight. Holy Moses, that's that's <laughs> phenomenal. Now you know why I wow. held that one. Really. Wow, I'm I'm kind of stunned. That's amazing. <laughs> go, go, go ahead and do do uh, uh, because this ties in with exactly wow. the question you were eliciting, trying to elicit the answer for me. But I wanted to drop that on you when you weren't looking. Ooh, yeah, wow. You can see the reaction. I'm kind of like stunned because that exactly it dovetails exactly into what we're talking about which, tonight. Oh. Which is why when we were talking earlier and we were going over this and we were talking about, it, I was I was trying not to laugh. I'm like, oh, you're gonna love this. Whoa. That's a, that's <laughs> amazing. Okay, I'm actually speechless. Linda, Linda, I'm speechless. <laughs> She'll <Yeah>. know. <laughs> she knows you're not telling the truth, John. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um. Okay. Given that bit of information, I, uh, let's go on. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and explain <laughs> explain for the explain for our viewers that we have some really great comments coming up. I'm just putting them here in the okay, queue. yeah, yeah. But uh, but go ahead and and finish your point here with this slide because I, I oh, love well, it's just it's just a proclamation of the grand, and I want to also uh, take notice of the tracing board that's on the ground, you know, and they're looking at. So again, you have your pillars, and you you have your symbols and masonry. And, and so I just want to kind of draw the similarities and to establish that it was 100 years ago. I mean, 100 years between uh, 16, 17, 17, 17. Uh, kind of yeah. curious. There's so, that 100 again. I, that 100 again. So yeah. go on. And then they had the Constitution um, of Freemasonry, uh, 1723. Um, and they have seven laws of Noah, which I thought is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is kind of what we're going to go over some of, you know, we're touching on this because there is a parallel between the Anderson's Constitution, the Freemasonry, and the first folio, which we'll get to. So onward. Yep. All right. Now, here it is. The first folio is the first collected edition of William Shakespeare's plays, correlated and published in 1623, seven years after Bacon had died, quote, died. On the mm -hmm. ninth day of April in the year 1626, and in the early morning of the day, um, celebrated our Savior's resurrection. So he basically died on Easter, which I, I thought was a real interesting time to die. Mm -hmm. you know, and are we talking physical death or symbolic death? Now, no, history says it's a, it's a you know it's a, a physical death, but that's a matter that's a matter for speculation. <laughs> I it know is, how you feel about it. Absolutely. But again, 1723, 1623, the, the mm -hmm. two publications were exactly 100 years apart. And in that simple cipher, 33 and 67, add them up and they come up with 100. And that is the number for Francis Bacon in simple cipher. Very good. Yeah. So <laughs> I love then that. Yeah, I want to include this because um, yeah. I had a question for Jake because I've been studying symbols for a long, long time. And I said, hey, Jake. 
Uh, great show. I want to know if you could uh, give me a list of frequently used cipher symbols, numbers that, that Francis Bacon used. And Jake, could you talk a bit, a bit about your reply to this? Because I think your, you know, your reply was very poignant. poignant you know? uh, well, thanks. Um, sure. You know, the first sentence is, I, I've been trying to think of how to best answer the question because um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's a little more complicated than that because, you know, uh, there are certain numbers that obviously repeat and, and what, I, mm -hmm. what I call a, a, a primary cipher signature of francis bacon such as the six the 33 67 137 which is the 33rd prime number of course represents uh the name bacon as well in some so you know looking at these different values they're also the battles of his true title of f the third in simple reverse and k those same exact numbers mm -hmm. so that's in my mind um f the third becomes you know a very very important uh signature and, and name that he used as as a signal uh, of his sure. true identity um there were others that repeat such as 133 144 and 167 and and they they actually um represent variations of not only his his uh, open identity of, of baron verulam for example of which he was very proud uh because it also represents uh you know versions of francis the third and so there's another one that no one ever talks about, which is 231. And this one repeats all over the place. And, and once again, once I started really calculating um, his true identity, this number popped up uh, again and again. And so the problem is that, that I uh, had talked about with you was the idea of number saturation. Yes. Uh, one of the things that we have to guard against um, is this idea of coming up with lots of variations of his name in terms of his true identity so that you can have a whole series of numbers and any of them could suddenly represent sure. Francis Bacon. The reason why the cipher signatures work is because they're unique and they have right. to work in context. And so that's why I, that, that was the simplest way I could actually answer your question because mm -hmm. it, it, it really uh, gets to be kind of complex, but you actually um, answered it when you were, when we were, um, in the pre-show mm -hmm. uh, or you're saying you because you talked about context and how important that is and that's what i absolutely work with. uh if you have a primary cipher signature um as a context 33 or 67 or 100 111 in, in uh, bacon and k cipher for example 171 is francis and k um any of these that are very common and then you have others that suddenly are one separation away going into his uh his true identity, then I say, okay, boom, that number is important. We have a hit. And especially Absolutely. when they repeat, when they repeat, I start moving them towards uh, the concept of a primary, primary cipher signature. If that answers your question, John. Yeah, that was perfectly answered. And so I kind of took that information, took the numbers you gave me and wanted to see if I, now I've been, you know, playing with the numbers on my own, but I was like, I just want to ask you that question because it really affirmed what I was doing. So I'm like, okay, now I have some confirmation. So Excellent. we can continue to go here. And so, again, you and I dis have discussed this. I've discussed this on, on the Curse of Oak Island Beyond live stream. Mm -hmm. It's about repeatable patterns, you know, no matter. And this is this is also kind of what Bacon was teaching us. You know, look yes. at repeat observation, yes. repeatable patterns. You know, he's showing us. He's telling us how to decipher his own work, you know, and in, in his actual works, you know. So and, and I, I think that what he was doing, John, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. uh, but I think what he was doing in, in his work was imitating nature because correct. the whole idea of his science was to study nature and identify correct. those repeating patterns. And what he did was he incorporated that into, into his work. His into his work. And, you know, he was, he was seeing the patterns. He saw patterns everywhere in nature. And there are patterns. I mean, you know, I think it's Plato that start, talks about theory of forms and there are patterns that are behind the actual existence of something. There's an essence and an existence. Absolutely. There's a the allegory, allegory of the cave. Yeah, yeah, the form of forms. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think Bacon does make reference to this. Um, you know, uh, here's one of the patterns that, and then, you know, that I saw. And this is Francis Bacon's The Achievement of Learning uh, frontispiece. It's considered mm -hmm. his first major philosophical work. You know, fast forward about 
two centuries and if we can back up for a second oh sorry that, that, here. and we we see it we see similar themes in the 1818 uh masonic tracing board uh, painting here um you have the pillars of hercules you have the dualities uh, you have the moon and the sun and you can just see the same patterns in both yeah, absolutely and so what you do is take more modern versions of something like like this tracing board and you back map in education we do back mapping we we take Correct. the outcome and say okay this is what it is and we start back mapping to see if there's repeatable patterns within the curriculum itself and, and again this is this is a uh, uh, bacon's discussion of of the alpha and omega starting with the omega the, yep. the work that is completed and going backwards and seeing if you can identify the word of origination, which was the plan. Right? Exactly. Now, if we go back one more time, in the very top, there's the Masonic handshake, if you see yep. it. And right so there. there it is, and that's still used to this day. Okay, so you, you have, you're starting to create a, a, a possible um, uh, argument for Mason, masonry, at least speculative masonry, being associated with bacon. Right. There's an argument to be had there. Oh, and absolutely. again, there's, there's so many more examples. I could have pulled up a hundred examples of tracing boards all throughout that time period, 400 years of tracing boards, and it's the repeatable pattern. But there it is, right there in Bacon's frontispiece. And I'm going to say, is it by coincidence, Jake? <laughs> you know, <laughs> about that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nothing by coincidence. Well, Jeff I mean, Freeman says, yes, it's by coincidence. <laughs> yes, of course he does. He's just trying to annoy us. Um, the, the, you know, it's funny. Is um, the, the thing is, though, gang, is that coincidences do work, do happen. I mean, yeah, let, let, sure, I mean, sure. Being, being honest, but when you have context, and and you can see uh, uh, the line of of thinking, philosophy, thought, what John is pointing out to us tonight, um, suddenly you have to kind of say, okay, there's a little bit more here than just coincidence. Absolutely, God, absolutely. Now, yeah. I, I would like to. Give a shout out to Tom Burns. Doesn't the scientific re re method require repeatable results? It does. <laughs> and so with Bakesonian scientific method, he is, again, demonstrating how to solve his own cipher. It's repeatable. Yeah. And it's it's repeatable over and over and over again without being number saturation. You see it. Yeah. But you have to see it in context. Correct. And, you know, I said this, uh, I think, the other night on, on the podcast last week. Mm -hmm. Um and I was just talking with you about it here pre-show, which is uh, when I was working on the cipher of, of the plaque, it taught me how to, how to decrypt it. And I, I really want pe people watching this to understand this. Um, it wasn't me just kind of pulling at strings and you know trying to pull a, a message out of the air. I was following the clues where they led me uh, using Bacon's inductive reasoning. And what it did was it literally taught me how to decrypt it. And so that's exactly what Bacon's method of teaching really was. So, yeah, thanks, Tom. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I talk to uh, quite a few theorists and my niche is symbols. So, you know, I, I share quite a bit of information and, you, you know, always look for the crossover since it's a great niche to have because it just cross, <laughs> cuts across so many theories. Yeah. Um, but one of the one of the theorists I was talking with in the past couple of weeks said, hey, you know what it is what's on? And you did something on Drake's map recently. Yeah. I said, you know, could that be just a printing error? It's a one off, right? It's it's a one shot sure. printing. So are these mismatched types and errors? Are they printing errors? Are they intentional errors? So you and I both agreed that we don't think they are, you know, just errors, that there, there's some intentionality to it. But let's for argument, Jake, if you can walk down this road, sure. say that Absolutely. they are printers errors. Correct. OK. Yep. It's an oops. OK. OK. So well, it's an oops. So fast forward. And and oh, by the way, can you talk about the six and the seven real quick? <laughs> I sure will. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we <laughs> um, and Jason Mercer's in the house, and he oh, knows hey Jason, that we did this as well. But when you start drawing some significant lines here, we, Jason yeah. calls them arch architectural lines, and they actually pass through this area. Yeah. Drawing our attention to it, drawing our attention to errors, as such as this backward seven. Mm -hmm. Seven is the letter G, uh, in simple cipher. Uh, G is the number 33 in K cipher, both the G and the number 33 are significant in Freemasonry. Correct. And then if we drop the zeros as nulls, we have the number 67, which is yes. Francis in simple cipher. Up here, we have an N and a V, which is 33 in yep. simple cipher, gang. 
Uh, so, you know, um, could be coincidence. Um, Maybe. But in reverse, in reverse cipher, it's actually 17, uh, which is the value of the word Rex, Latin for king in short cipher. And then wow. we have, of course, the symbolic A around anything. And why would, when you have all of this wonderful space to write the name of Nubia on the map, why would it be broken up on each side of the river unless you wanted to draw attention to these two letters? Correct. But I don't know. Well, maybe it's, 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 it could be a printing error. It could be a printing error. So you know where I'm going with this argument. So, so roll yeah. forward. So there we go. now, Jake, let me ask you, if I see similar errors that commiserate with the errors that we saw in Drake's map, the first folio in the King James version of the Bible, the 1611, the one that Francis Bacon took one year to edit, <laughs> are they printing errors is my question to you. Considering his level of attention to detail, um, yeah, it's got to be a coincidence. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> not a chance. Come on. Come I mean, you, you, this guy was a genius, uh, the biggest genius of the last 500 years. As oh, far absolutely. As I absolutely. Um, and so <laughs> suddenly when we look at <laughs> errors um, with, with someone who used errors constantly to draw attention to clues to decrypt his messages, uh, they were put there purposefully. Um, there's not a chance that he was uh, making a mistake there. And, you know, Pedro Amundsen pointed out numerous errors in the first folio. You've pointed Absolutely. out numerous errors. And so, again, as a methodology, the mm -hmm. re repeating of intentional, uh, they're not errors, the intentionality and typeface differences. They're, 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 they're signposts is what they they're are. They're signposts, intentionality yeah. and reversals Intention. and certain things like that are drawing your attention. Yes. Now, when I'm about to show, just when I decoded it, uh, every hair on my arm stood up at once. Yeah. So I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This is but so cool. It matched everything you had been talking about. And then you have a couple more layers to add on to this, which is exciting for me. So it was <laughs> amazing. So here we go. The G, you see the G in Psalms 46, okay? The G, there the G is. represents oh, Francis Bacon, correct? Mm -hmm. um, this becomes an anchor point, and I, I like to name things. So this is an anchor point for how to decode this particular passage. Um, and this is what's used to decode Psalms 46. And we start there. Also, notice the Florida Lee. What Here, does it represent, Jake? Uh, as above, so below. As, as above, um, so below. Because it's repeated, and then you have the the trinity the holy trinity correct sort of, yeah and then of course it represents the french royal family which francis bacon was a member correct now if you remember the h that we saw earlier remember the mm -hmm. h we saw earlier the as above so is below again a repeatable theme different symbols different sim symbolism there but repeatable themes as above so is below so this tells me right here that there might be something up with this particular Psalms or this particular biblical passage in King James here in 1611. Oops. So, um, okay. Um, so we're going to go on. What is needed yep. to unlock Psalms 46? Now, I'm not a cipher person. You know that. I'm a symbol person. But I, I, I went I have ahead to tell and... You, you, you did a mighty fine job with this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so we have G that stands for Francis Bacon, right? We also mm -hmm. have the symbol cipher of 33 and 67. Now, 33 and 67 adds up to 100. Thank the you. same 100 that we saw in the dates earlier. So I think the Masonic Constitution and the founding of the Masonic Lodge were kind of a shout out to Bacon's influence on, on, on masonry in a big way, which I'm about to reveal. Yeah. So, but we now see that ma magic number 100 as representing Francis Bacon. Now, there's a third symbol. There's a small printer's error <laughs> uh, again um there were three crosses that appeared in in this passage and i looked at them and i started to connect the dots and we will talk about those three crosses because bacon wants to make sure as the editor and we know he was the editor he was trying to make a point in this specific specific passage he wants to communicate something and it's nothing for the light of heart. So we'll continue on with this. This is this is amazing. 
So Psalms 46.10. Now, so in Psalms 46.10, um, not counting the directions and Shalah, which is a, a chorus command, if you go 46 words from the top, you run into the word shake. If you go 46 words from the bottom up, you run into the word spear. With the Masonic or the uh, G, Santa was also a Masonic G, which also represents bacon. Now, this again could be coincidence. Sure. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for those crosses. So Bacon's making sure he communicates something here. And this was the mind blower. So continue forward. There is the cross. So what I did was start with the center. Again, you have your as above and below on the G. Start from the center point, which is fully divine, fully man, right? Right. Um, and drew from the center of the G through the crosses to hit three words. Okay. The first one is this fear. I think you have to fear what he's about to tell you is really what I'm thinking there, Jake, that yep. what he's about to yep. tell you is something to be feared. And the second one goes through sphere. The third one goes through shake. So at this point, these three crosses are directional. They're telling you where to go to the code Psalms 46. So at this point, you have the G representing Francis Bacon as Shakespeare. <laughs> it, it gets it gets better. Now, I also want to point out, and if I can read it at the top, at the right under Psalms 46, the confidence which the church hath in God. And I think that's very significant because he hides it right here in one of the most significant passages in the Bible, which is and genius. It is genius. And then eight, an exhortation to behold it. If you go down and read eight, it says, come, behold the works of of the Lord. Wow. And so what was that word? Devotations the hath made in the yeah, earth. earth. In the earth. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. You know, so this this passage, and I have my own theory on what you just read. Um, this passage is laced with symbolism and codes. And he uses yeah. both as if to communicate. So, hey, if you can't read, I'm still going to communicate this with you. You know, and, and a lot of people could read back then. So he's communicating it in, in, in a different modes of communication, which is genius. This is pure genius. It really is. And it's he's, he's pointing out uh, signifying lines one. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I'm just spitballing now. Uh, oh, that's fine. Go, uh, go for it. Uh, lines one and eight, which is <clears throat> 18 which is the letter G in reverse cipher. Wow. And so that that corroborates your your accounting method of counting backwards from the back to find mm -hmm. the name Spear as well, or the word wow. Spear. Wow. wow that's, pretty, that's really cool. Uh, I just it's, it's, it's just so awesome. And so I think here's where he's identifying he's Shakespeare, but it, it, it gets even better. Mm -hmm. It, it gets better. So 46 on the top, 46 on the bottom, 4 plus 6 is 10. Four plus six is 10. Um, this is a typical method that Bacon uses to code. You know, is adding the first two numbers, adding the last two numbers. So um, yielding a ratio of one to one. He's saying something. I am one with the d divinity, or I am one with the sacred, or I am one with God, is what I think he's saying here. That is also seen in that G again, as above, so is below. Let me ask you this, John. And okay. again, this, this just occurred to me. Um, yeah. Did you see what word was number 100? I have not. Because it'd be really interesting if it was that word right there. Hmm. God. I, again, just spitballing if this is 46 down here, you know, about. Someone know. out there was counting, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I hope someone out there. Is <laughs> I don't have time to do it right now. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. These that would the be amazing if it was. Yeah. It would be yeah. absolutely amazing. So. Um, count it now live. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, this is 46. Shalah does not count. It's a choir, it's a chorus command. You cannot oh, count okay. Shalah. Well, we're counting live. Oh, missed it. Oh, wait. 
Is, is it Hold on. No, but it looks like 108 is. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, is it really? <laughs> I, again, I'd listen. I, I Jake, may have Jake, you wrong. can't make it up. You just can. You come on. Now. I, I, I could have miscounted, gang. I'm sorry. But it <laughs> looks to me like it was 108. But, yeah, but July, you never count. But... Yeah. yeah, as soon as I subtracted that, I'm like, yeah, I think it's 108. Oh, um, my goodness. I don't know. I, I we'll have to re- we have to but, yeah. So we're gonna have to re, re we're gonna have to revisit this. We could spend a whole hour just on this, Jake. Just decoding this. I mean, it's, it's just the most ridiculous. amazing thing. So so, and so somebody out there, I hope you know. If, if I got it wrong, I apologize. But I'm doing it here on the fly. This is teleprompter free, uh, you know, sort of stuff here. Um, <laughs> so it, it continues. Those, those, to get, of you know, those of you who don't know, 108 <laughs> is the value of Francis in reverse cipher. That's it what it is. It. I knew the minute you said it, I was like, "Are you kidding me? Is it really? Oh my gosh. gosh, you can't make it up." Oh my All god! Right. I, okay, I I'm, again, I'm like, happy coincidence. You know, let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> it's just you can't. You can't make this up. This part I love. <sighs> okay, okay. So now. 4610, uh, it's something my mother always told me. She goes, be still and know that I'm God. She thought that this was one of the most sacred passages in the Bible, and it is. Mm -hmm. So we know the ratio of 46 up and 46 down is one to one. I am one with the divine. So 46, when numbers are side by side, you multiply them. Okay. So 10 times 10 is 100, which is equivalent to Francis Bacon and simple cipher. And then you have to read it. And the am is what I'm going to point your attention to, which is, of course, it's an off typeface. Be still and know that I am God. I think here Bacon is telling us that he is ascendant master. And every time I think about it, it gives me my every hair on my arm stands up because and now you have God at 108, if you're correct. And he's once again telling you I that am Francis. I am Francis. I am God. And, and, and I want you to think about that statement. That is pure heresy yeah. to the what Vatican. Is. And if this is what at all, what masonry or speculative masonry or the guild masonry inherited from the Templars after the desolation, and they're 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 you know they had to rebrand themselves. They had they were refugees, but they they you know it's my personal belief that they might have made their way into the the Mason guilds, mm-hmm. and eventually made its way. This information made its way to Francis. This is pure heresy, and would have it would have been exactly the reason why the Vatican went after the Templars in thirteen yeah. or something. There's no doubt in my mind. If you're saying you are God, you know that you are divine within your very nature. Oh, essence yeah. and existence are the same thing yes this is a direct a direct assault on church teachings council of ephesus and trent and nicaea go out the door if this is true no reason for the church you yeah. are god just unrealized very buddhist too i mean this is exactly some oh, of the yeah. eastern traditions you know you are you are buddha just you don't realize it you are god but just don't realize it and there's also this is just so this this line is just ridiculous uh, because also still the way it's spelled um, with one L uh, totals the number fifty seven which is the number of the triple tau. Oh, amazing! And don't forget the word the offset word B B is not spelled right. Yep. And, and Jake, uh, can you talk about the reference to that? And I know you and I have talked about it, but B yeah. is in there. The idea of um, bees, uh, one of the messages from the ciphertext uh, in my book that I write, talked about was um, Bacon referenced the M hand sign as being a way to venerate bees uh, and uh, by holding their hands in this position in paintings. Yeah. Uh, reason being, um, the letters B-E-E in simple cipher total 12, which is the number of the letter M uh, in mm. simple cipher. Mm. And um, I, I believe that they were using it as a symbol uh, back then for privateering uh, for Queen Elizabeth. They were going out and gathering the the gold as honey to bring back to their queen at the oh, hive. Uh, that, that, that's always been my my interpretation of that at this point. 
And that makes perfect sense. And, and the yeah. Spanish Spain was in full force. Spain was a, a, a under the Vatican control, control. Tons of gold is coming back, you know, and then you have privateers mm -hmm. intercepting gold for the Vatican. It mm -hmm. shows you the, the divide between, you know, if there is a Rose Cross, which I do believe there is, the, and the divide between what Bacon was doing and, and the Vatican at this point. And if you are God, everything that the church is teaching, therefore, becomes false. Yeah. And then this is a direct assault on the church. The King James Bible in its coded form is a direct assault on the Vatican's version of divinity. Yeah. Wow. Great stuff, John. This is just, <laughs> I mean, you can't. And, and then you see it in this 18th century. This is actually printed in 1900, but it's from the, sorry, 19th century. Um, and it's been in the early 1800s. Jesus, again, at the top of the pyramid as ascended master. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the yeah. seven steps, the seven liberal arts of the mind, the seven steps, seven rungs, uh, seven runs, and the actually the triple towel up at the top yep. there. You see the three right. that that in, Mas in the Mas masonry that that actually is the symbol for ascendant master. Yep, so you have it all there, and there is the heretical belief of Jesus as ascendant master, which Bacon. And you talked a little bit about that at the very beginning, yeah. Bacon as as the as the Jesus figure, um, right. and there's the connection right there. Yeah, Jake. I mean, and when you, you said that, you blew me away with that. Well, it, that, this is why when we got to this point, I was biting the inside of my cheek when we were talking earlier, <laughs> because uh, um, they, what you were doing was just kind of blowing me away. The triple towel, coincidentally, um, it's not so coincidentally because I don't believe in that anymore. Well, well, but well, the same uh, thing yeah. as still uh, being yes. fifty-seven. Um, as a value in symbol cipher, the triple tau in, in uh, fourfold cipher uh, is 67, and which is Francis. Francis. Uh, in cipher. And this is why Francis Bacon used the triple tau as his symbol when he would sign uh, uh, certain, you know, secret letters to his brother, Anthony, his stepbrother, Anthony. Uh, yep. Anthony, used, Anthony used the quadruple tau. Uh, and the, all of this, uh, and when you can find this um, on uh, Peter Dawkins' website, it's an amazing resource. Um, I, I wish I had found it, you know, when I first started uh, writing my book, because um, it's it just there's such a wealth of information there. Um, and so they, uh, Brant, mm. um, so, I'm sorry, Anthony would use the quadruple tower because that value is 91, mm -hmm. which is the name Anthony in Simple Cipher. So wow. these guys were the central Rosicrucians. And um, I believe that there was someone else using the double towel, but uh, as as a part of their organization, and I, I firmly possibly. believe that, that was Sir Walter Sir Walter Raleigh, Holly, which that, that's, your, that's, your third that, that's my hypothesis at this point. And um, I'm looking for. I think I found a few corroborating pieces of evidence to to support that as well. So yeah, so it's it's a repeatable, and you know <laughs> I think you're right, and I think yeah. Sir Walter Raleigh is involved in this um, mm -hmm. in a big way, and we've yeah. discussed that off air. So um, yeah. Yeah. you know, and it still needs to be flushed out. You still need to yeah, prove that, and you know, absolutely. I never make an a, a assertion unless I see the repeatable a repeatable pattern. And yep. and again, the ascendant master theme you now see it in in you know 19th century masonry. Yeah. As ascendant master, which which completely correlates with what Bacon is proclaiming himself to be, <laughs> so uh, it's it's a big yeah. one that we have a little yeah. more to this. And this is yeah. this occurred to me this morning. Let's see if the okay. So now, uh, Theosophy, you know, and, and Theosophy inherits this to an extent, but you know, I'm not looking at the Theosophy. I'm going back to the Bacon with the I am principle. Mm -hmm. At this point, you become the the capstone to the pyramid. And what 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 kind of stopped me in my tracks when I was shopping this morning? I stopped. I'm like, wait a minute, because I was thinking I rattle. And as a teacher, you know, you rattle over what you're going to say over and over. You rehearse it. Yeah. yeah. And I said, damn, <laughs> Bacon did it again. Um, what the all seeing eye symbol or eye of providence symbol means in masonry, I believe, in speculative masonry, and you know, even back to the time of the Templars, is that mm -hmm. that eye that's looking at you is you. You are the eye of providence, you are God. You have reached the capstone of the pentacle of the status of ascendant master. You realize that you're fully divine, 
and therefore you are literally looking at a reflection of yourself right and there's a front piece i couldn't find but there is a there is a drawing you know the one i'm talking about where francis yeah, bacon is looking down in a like a pond or a puddle and sees his reflection mm -hmm. this is exactly what's being demonstrated with the all-seeing eye you are god yeah and um Such you, you mean, it, mm. yeah it's it's oh gosh definitely uh well what's funny is I, we, you and i talked about this pre-show which was yeah. yeah and you said at the very beginning of the show that you know one of your uh big inspirations was joseph campbell and Absolutely. that's what um, that's what got me started on this path too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one of the thing one of my favorite descriptions of the all-seeing eye on the back of the dollar bill is you know he, he refers to it as the eye of providence but as um the enlightenment thinkers viewed it as the eye of reason and what this image represents is that if you're standing on one side of the pyramid and on the plane of chaos, which is mm -hmm. what that is, and you have the 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 uh, unfinished pyramid, which is civilization, which goes unfinished until mm -hmm. you complete it yourself within yourself is what you're describing. Um, he, he called it the eye of reason yep. and um, that it's through, you know, uh, learning and using your reason that you can actually understand. Uh, the mind of God eventually, which was ph Bacon's philosophy, the idea of Mr. studying Bacon. nature in order to understand the plan. Absolutely. And, and so if you rise above and look down, you see all four sides at the same time. And that's true enlightenment in that sense. Um, and what's amazing about what you just said is that's exactly what you saw in Psalms 46. You saw yep. the 10 on each side and you saw 10 on the top and the bottom, all four sides at the same time. So he's basically showing you the, the schemata of mind almost in Psalms 46 with I am God, with the am in a different typeset. So he yes. is really driving home that point about the ascendant master. Um, I think it's coded, okay. but I, I think that's exactly what he's telling me. Jay. There's I mean, so much there on that page. Yeah, so much. And, and I haven't even come close to, to even coming close to it because there's a whole other layer of your the, the things that you do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's so much there. I mean, it's just it's rich. And the Bible is full of this stuff. I mean, yes. a, a couple months ago, I said, hey, the King James Bible is coded. And you go, yes, it's coded. And now you can start <laughs> to see things because I've been studying this oh, yeah. for yeah. five years. And it's yeah. just rich in the sort of symbology and symbolism yeah, like i was saying earlier i mean it's like I, i've looked at you know different passages i've never looked at that one and and that is just that's the most i've ever seen it's, um it's in, in anything that i've looked at so you, you this you just keep the hits just keep on coming man I mean, just... and, and you know it's just it's just it's just when i realized it the first time and i said oh and and you know you realize it and you said that's really what he's talking about because you always think mm -hmm. of god as an outside force but that's not right. what he's saying at all it's, it's just it's just it's, it's an inner force inner force yes it's an inner force yeah. it's the wow. and it seats at the, the soul or the you know seats at the right here with the mind the gray matter the philosopher's stone as you said earlier yeah this it's is right here yeah. that is the philosopher's stone yeah so uh yahweh is the i am principle you see, you know, again, the down arrow for as uh, below, so as above. That's also um, sacred masculine and sacred feminine. It's also the um, the uh, two triangles that make up the Star of David as well, just in a different mm -hmm. form. You expand that the sacred feminine to, you know, match the set for the sacred feminine, the sacred masculine, right. the circle. Um, and you also see around Moses' head at this, and this is Exodus. Um, yep. The, the enlightenment he is now a reflection of god he is god the god principle was within moses and again right. 10 commandments the number 10, 10 is there once again repeatable yep yep so it's just it's just it's just amazing so cool so i think we have one little last slide maybe yep and so um Oh, we have two more slides to go. So I think what Bacon is teaching us here in his messages is that that you are the ascendant master and you just don't realize it. You are the I am principle of God. You see this in theosophy and you see this repeated over and over in, in, in Bacon's, you know, you know, theology within the King James Version of the Bible. And, and, and here you see it. Once you give up everything that's gotten you there, it's much like Buddhism. All those tools in this picture, um, you know, that were used to to get the ascendant master there, you know, and even his his corpse, I'm going to say, that might even be the same person. He discards yeah. his earthly form 
and shuffles, and shuffles off the mortal coil. Yes, that it shucks the corn almost, you know, and 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 therefore now has not the earth in his hands, but that is a a symbol for uh, the constellations. He has the heavens in his hand, yes. and is now ascended master. Everything wow. is at his fingertips, and he has made it. That's just so cool. That's and of so course cool. the. The staff of Hermes, right there, which is the one of the keys to enlightenment in and of itself. Enlightenment, the Cadius itself, the staff of Hermes. So it's yeah, all the, uh, there, representing and, the Kundalini serpent energy traveling up the spine for the to be released in an enlightenment absolutely, experience. Absolutely. So, which is actually uh, the meaning of the obverse of uh, the Great Seal of the United States on the back of the dollar bill, the eagle. Uh, that entire yep. concept is encoded within that image. Really Absolutely. Cool. It's so, it's just amazing. So <laughs> I'm going to leave us with that. And we have one last thing to ask everyone. And, you know, it's, I'm going to give you a shout out to our could it be folks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, discovery of Francis Bacon's cipher signatures in James's Anderson's constitution of the Freemasons. I'm currently tackling that topic. Could it be? Yes, it could be. <laughs> and so, is this the end, Jake? Will I ever see you in the show again? And when are we going to do this again? Uh, oh, you, I think. I think. Yeah, we're I think. Yeah, we might. Continue. This is uh, to be continued. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I leave everyone with that. But you know, I've I've read numerous articles on this. Um, that Bacon's um, signature ciphers are sitting there right in Anderson's yeah. constitution 100 yeah. years after the first yeah. folio. Yeah. Not and, by uh, coincidence. Not by coincidence. Um, and so, you know, sorry, gang, you, you, I'm, I'm looking through the, all of the messages. Um, and this is where we left off, I think. Um, <laughs> there's, there's so many of them. <laughs> uh, of course, Daniel, he says, I believe that uh, Bacon organized the degrees of speculation, but it's my belief. It really started when King Henry VIII abolished the Knights Templar in England, and they secretly practiced the speculative Freemasons. Possibility. Awesome. Yeah. Um, possible. yeah. Um, it, it's without a doubt, you know, um, the operative Masons were, you know, very active. Yeah, um, and, and you know, uh, from from what I've seen in the messages that, that uh, I've read, you know, he states that, you know, his famous fraternity evolved into Freemasonry. But mm -hmm. uh, I'll be again, uh, it, it's it's all on the table as far as I'm concerned. Um, Jenny, yeah. want to know, is this the same Pike as the Confederate general? Absolutely, Jenny. Yeah. Good now, now, when I look at the masonry that I look at, it's pre Albert Pike. I mean, he had so mm -hmm. much of, of the occult imagery in there. I think it diluted the purity of masonry, in my opinion. And yeah, I don't deal much with modern day masonry. I, I back mapped it from, you know, decoding this. I back mapped it from the masonry during the founding fathers mm -hmm. um, time and before. And so I yeah. used that as a template. And then I asked myself in the line of thought, because I'm always talking about the line of thought, did I start to see the same symbolism yeah. as I went backwards all the way to the Templars. So I work with that time from the 1720s to the Templars and look at a line of thought. Is it the same? No. Or these splinter cells, and it well, keeps repeating. we definitely see the same uh, symbols repeating. Um, mm -hmm. it, yeah, you know, I, I also believe that that uh, Pike used a lot of those that those same techniques um, in uh, Morals and Dogma, from what I've seen in my copy. Uh, there, there's you know, there, there's a lot going on there that um, goes beyond just the denotation of what he wrote, for sure. Yeah, now, the Hospitallers and the Knights of Malta. Someone had mentioned. Um, yep. inherited they were the vatican's chosen for the templar assets the templars mm -hmm. ceased to exist officially 1307 to 1312 13 trial the templars but you still have whether however the templars rebranded themselves because they weren't cut off at this point um the 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 templar roads between jerusalem uh, as a pilgrim route and 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 you know uh europe were in existence the templar fleet if there was one was in high gear yeah, they had yeah. no source of income except, you know, at this point, you know, um, uh, piracy to some extent, yeah. and and you know, and intercepting gold to the Vatican. Well, if you saw the Vatican kill a couple thousand of your brothers, you, you're going to start <laughs> intercepting Vatican. Well, why should the Vatican have this? You know, you know, let's this give them a yeah. gut shot, so to speak. So, you know, um, 
You know, I, there was a comment about it. Yes, and I was aware, you know, yep. it was rebranded. But where, what happened to the Templars after they became refugees is the question. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Know. Yeah, good thoughts, gang. Um, you know, Robert the Bruce was excommunicated at this point, so I believe some of them did end up in Scotland. Nice oh, this is interesting. Uh, Patrick uh, popping in. Uh, thanks for joining us. Verilam, Ver alum. Um, alum was needed to die wool. Pope cut mm. off alum supply to England after Henry VIII left the church. Bacon was searching for alum, true alum. Wow. Which was needed to die wool, hence the Tudor's sumptuary laws. Edward was a rich protector of Elizabeth. Hebrew, God is my oath. St. Alban was beheaded by the banks of the Vera River. Wow. Mm. Cool thoughts. I didn't know that. Wow. Patrick. Very cool. Very cool. And, and think about the beheading. And and I yeah. think we've been talking about if the seed of the soul is truly the, the mind, beheading is like the ultimate insult. You oh, know, yeah. If you're beheaded, you know. You know well, you're, that, you're separating that which is above from that which is below. Correct. So, so. It, was, it was it was definitely a, a way of of communicating, you know, the, the disdain for this as above, so it was below philosophy. Yeah, um, Daniel saying that Edward de Vere supposedly died on Saint John the Baptist Day. That's hmm. interesting. Uh, Didn't know that, Daniel. Nice. Wow. Okay. By the way, uh, Daniel, uh, sorry, de Vere didn't write Shakespeare. Anyway, um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I couldn't resist. Uh, Linda wanted to just say, uh, tonight is amazing. John's never been speechless in his life. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and uh, Barbara, yeah, uh, brings up a good point. Um, Christ was resurrected at the age of 33. That is how the, yes. That's the good official point. story. I, I, yeah. And so once again, we have um, that number. And Barbara is asking the upper right photo. I think she was talking about the eye of Horus on that one mm -hmm. slide. Is that the third eye or the eye of God? Uh, such a great question. Um, I, I can tackle that if you like. Go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, doing I'll the follow up on something. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to say uh, the, the trade routes were in full swing, especially even during the time of Christ. And the Silk Road was in full swing. So um, there's two thoughts on that. Was it, and you had Egypt there, you know? Um, was it a diffusion of information or was it independent origination? And I'm always a big believer in diffusion of information. I think as well as goods being traded along the, the Spice Road, I think certain esoteric or, you know, or the Eastern teachings were coming over the Silk Road as well um, and being traded just like goods, you know, yeah. and, and especially and also with the Middle East and the Egypt and then with the Roman Empire and on into, you know, parts of France. And you have that whole tradition of, of the Black Madonna or Magdalene hitting the south of France, which is a line of thought. I'm not saying that's true or not, and that's another discussion. But you have a tradition out there that says, you know, that that line of thought has has relevance. And even if it isn't true, if the line of thought influences history, there is a truth to the line of thought. There you go. Yeah, and and you know, as the Eye of Horus, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of people refer to Horus as being the um, uh, the model, one of the models, one of the mm -hmm. archetypes that, that Jesus followed. Yes. And of course, Isis was the, the Madonna um, in that sense. And then a lot of the iconography is exactly the same for the two. Same. Uh, same thing. In, in history. Uh, but in addition, you know, the eye of Horus, uh, there are some people who speculate that um, the reason why it could represent the third eye is that when you dissect the human brain and see the pituitary uh, yep. gland in, in, in situ, um, the pattern around it actually the is same. the shape of the eye of Horus. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. That's Absolutely. It's, a lot of, there's a whole lot there, gang. Yep. It's a lot to decipher, a lot of, a lot of the unpack. I mean, we could go on yeah. a lot longer, just Psalms, and you haven't even tackled Psalms yet yourself. No, so. no I haven't even looked at them. Uh, not it's all. It's just um, it's crazy. And so kind of popping for, oh, uh, someone had asked about the seven stars. Um, Barbara had asked about the seven stars and, and Patrick handled the question for us in real time, uh, okay, representing the Pleiades, the seven sisters. Uh, there was a group of French Rosicrucians who called themselves the Pleiades. Uh, they were the, um, interesting. Uh, yeah, they were, they were artists, uh, playwrights, uh, poets, um, that, that, uh, the French court had organized and sponsored to consolidate the French language. And they were highly influential on Francis Bacon when he traveled there as a teenager. Makes sense. Um, and he wanted to come to back to England, mm 
mm-hmm. and do the same thing for England and create a, and unify the language of England. Mm, makes so, sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, <laughs> and lo and behold, Daniel had already handled that answer for us. As well. Awesome, Daniel. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, He's on top so, of it. <laughs> on top of it. Everyone is. We have a great, great group of people here. Um, just so many questions. I'm not going to be able to get through all of them. Uh, let's see. Patrick with another. Uh, the cross is the touchstone, particular of faith. And he's using a lot of Latin, and I'm not going to murder it by trying to pronounce it. Uh, Coticula is touchstone. Touchstone is a fool. Oh, this is interesting. Mm, wow. And okay. so the first folio paper size is fool's cap. Oh, uh, mm. wow. A conical hat shaped like the Greek letter delta. And the watermark of the first folio paper is a seven-pointed crown. <sighs> Patrick. You can't, you can't make it up. <laughs> There's seven Francis Bacon Trump. right there. <laughs> Come yeah. on now. So now we know whose crown it is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> As ascended and master, of course. As ascended masters. Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, sure. And again, um, Patrick said the Delta letter meaning is change, swap letters, John D, anagrams, palindromes. Absolutely. Wow. Um, the, the other cool thing about um, one of the things we talked about with John D was that uh, he his his um, his code name for Queen Elizabeth? Everyone knows was 007, is because it looks like a seven over two two O's. Mm-hmm. But in reality, the O's were eyes. He refer, he referred to himself as her eyes, and the seven was a Daleth, the hmm. fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is D. So it looks like a 007, which was his his code number, but um, it also represented the name D, and he was her eyes. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Jan wants to know who was the clever person who took the time to figure that out. Forty-six down shake. Um, that would be the guest this evening. No, no, <laughs> John Edwards. <laughs> clever person to figure that out. Uh, and she's asking uh, what forty-six stands for. Um, well, um, I I don't have anything for the number forty-six, mm. and and I I think that um. There are times, particularly since it's, you know, uh, that's the number of, of the psalm. Um, hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's the reason for it to be 46. That The number of the psalm was the clue to yes. the code. Yeah. To the code. Yeah. And then Great. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10, you have 10. It keeps going with that theme of 10, 10, 10, 10. 10 times 10 is 100. And then Francis Bacon. Well, not only that, but we have an expert in, in the crowd who has no. a better answer. Than what we cool. have. Oh, look at this. Uh, okay. Luke Peterson, uh, former guest on the show. The number 46 is also the next octave above the 23rd harmonic, which he points out in New Atlantis is somewhat problematic. There's a lot going on with the 23rd, 23rd harmonic. That's genius. What a great statement. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Wow. That's genius. That is amazing. Um, hmm. And let's see. Oh, Patrick with a good observation. 234 23rd of April 23.4 degrees is the axis of the Earth's orbit as it spins in space wow. and it, the hits just keep on coming gang <laughs> absolutely I love Patrick it. I'm having you on next buddy um, <laughs> let's see uh, very cool stuff oh Barbara with a wonderful comment about the bees uh, weren't bees the nickname of the priestesses of initiation <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> wow uh, great correlation the, the, yeah, that's a great correlation. They were also mm. associated with the muses. Um, and uh, the reason that I believe that they were uh, nicknamed the priestesses of initiation is uh, the, the um, how do I say this? The experience of, of enlightenment, the experience of, of um, illumination, mm-hmm. where the initiate uh, is able to prove to themselves that they are divine and have, have a, a an immortal soul that can mm-hmm. exist separate from the human body is presaged by um, what's called Kundalini release, which sounds like the buzzing of bees and electric sparks mm-hmm. in your inside your skull. And um, I think that's, that could be the reason why uh, bees were named that. It's just my guess. What do you, and think again, the, uh, the, the initiation, you know, that's your queen bee. That's also Elizabeth. 
you know yes so you have that little bit of correlation there so I, I really appreciate that like almost like she's the queen of initiation to the you know, the rosicrucian order and even wow. if she didn't know about it you know she they viewed her as such oh jason mercer in the house um he covered the art of baking looking at the reflection uh yes. jason i have to have you on and, and show that to us and we can talk about that and um post uh post make it a post in our group it'd be Absolutely. awesome um so that we can all look at it. It's such good stuff. Um, Patrick, you know what? I'm really sorry I missed all of these while we were presenting. <laughs> wow. Switching back and forth between uh, showing, but Anatasaic Tetrameter, Sacred Meter and Poetry and Music. Yes. It's an anagram of C Captain. Oh, wow. Mm. Sideris Erasmus Rhododamus. C Captain was his joke agnomen because he t crossed the channel from the continent to england he had a sense of humor he wrote in praise of folly folly is fools fools cat paper again <laughs> oh jeez let's keep on coming these, jake he says all of these are john <laughs> d jokes and clues um <laughs> yeah very cool and you know john d was actually teaching people navigation mm -hmm. and so as such, um, in my work, what I've been able to do is break down the fact that uh, Francis Bacon uh, went to sea with Sir Francis Drake and was his navigator and first mate for a time. Um, and so, you know, so many, so many overlaps, so many. And then hence why Bacon used that image of the ship in his frontispiece. What you're saying is correct, which I believe it is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Patrick with another. The Stratford Monument. uh the number 53 references Psalm 53 and refers to Matthew 5, 3, 8 through 40. You must not hide your light under a bushel. You must share it for the whole world. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Such a great, that's a great connection to make. Wow. It, 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 it ties in exactly with what we've it's, we've seen and what we've covered, too. Wow. That's amazing. What a great, great reference. Great that's reference. an awesome correlation there. Wow. Awoken one is with us, one of our favorite <laughs> guests. He says, Ghost of Bacon lost me at the start of the show when John said Francis Bacon edited the Bible for King James. This stream is the good you know, going to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, awesome. Always great. Always great comments. Um, so, yeah. Jason says Bacon had children in his opinion and they continued the purpose. That, that's entirely possible, Jason. You Very and I possible. talked about that at length uh, for sure. Um, yeah, sorry that a lot of you were had, had missed a, a portion of this. Um, <laughs> Tom says he's going to have to play this back and, and <laughs> uh, you know, just kind of scrolling through. We need to try to wrap things up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, went things a little long here for a lot of people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, here's here's one of the highest compliments you and I've been paid in a while. Uh, Court says, "Great show, gang. Consider my mind blown." Uh, <laughs> that's thanks, that's a high compliment for Court. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate that very much. Um, so, what we're going to do is uh, try to wrap things up. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Somebody's hungry for a BLT now. Uh, maybe bacon makes everything better. <laughs> um Dan, Dan Espino wants to know is Patrick human or is he a computer? <laughs> well, who knows? He might be uh, an immortal bacon in disguise, for all we know. So um yeah, gang. So we're gonna wrap things up. And uh John, uh anything to add before we uh sign off here? No, no, no. I actually was brought to no words tonight, so thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, it was, it was so far, probably one of my proudest moments on the show. I just want you to know. It's yeah, and, and the gang, that. the gang over at Curse, Curse of Oak Island Beyond live stream. They're going to tease me about that for months to come. The night John was speechless. <laughs> I'm going to take credit. I'm going to take full credit. Yeah, you that. can take full credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man. I, I want to oh, thank man. you so much. I, do you have um, either a website or do you want to plug the shows, um, the podcast? Sure. Now's yeah, the yeah I would love to, to plug, you know, Curse of Oak Island Beyond live stream where we do a lot of this with the theorist. I just happen to be theorist tonight. <laughs> so, but um, we, we do a lot of that and we really enjoy doing it. I hope everyone can tune in there. And, you know, it's a show that you've been on before. So I would like to plug that. Um, books to come. Um, 
a, a couple things I've revealed to Jake to come um, that I believe are going to be um, little bombs, but um, to come. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I've been sipping on this. Um, <laughs> ever since you dropped that on me and we took our break here before the show, I, I, I had to crack open a double IPA. and I'm <laughs> uh, That'll be my next stop. <laughs> just to keep myself calm. <laughs> after after what you just dropped on me here a little about an yeah. hour and a half yeah. ago, two hours yeah. ago, that was, I can't wait for your books, man. Yeah, it'd be good. So yeah, <laughs> that's all, all right, I got. <laughs> uh, awesome. You know, I'm gonna um, pull you out and uh, just wait in the waiting room here, and okay. uh, we'll say goodbyes after the show. Uh, what a great show, man! Thanks so much. Thanks, Jeff. Dude, this, I mean, this is everything I thought it would be more. Yeah. So that's it, gang. Um, really want to thank my friend John. I, 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 so many mind blowing moments here for all of us. And this, I, this was as much fun as I knew it would be. Um, I'm going to wrap things up. I want to say thanks for all of you popping in, uh, had a, a real good show, a real, uh, good live audience tonight, as usual, a lot of, a lot of new faces. I'm happy to see that. So keep it coming. Um, so thanks again. Once again, uh, this was a special edition and, uh, we'll do it again next week. Thanks gang. Appreciate it. Bye now.